This is the plant of the American Lead Pencil Company. And this is the story of how labor and management here dealt squarely with some basic problems that face companies and unions everywhere. The film was made here, and all but two of the people you will see are actual workers or company officials. It was 1937, a year of national labor turmoil. The causes went way back, but the fight actually began here with a pink slip. It was the last straw. As John Lombardo and his fellow workers saw it, none of them were getting a square deal. They'd already agreed on what they wanted. Vacations with pay, sick leave, a chance to advance, higher wages. There was only one answer, organize. By Tuesday, in three days, the plant was organized. Management was suddenly confronted with a unified labor force. There wasn't any pencil workers union, but they were taken into the textile workers and became Local 77A. Then they asked management to sit down and listen to their demands. Believe me, when we walked into that conference room and saw all those brass hats looking down our throats, we were plenty scared, especially of the plant manager and Mr. Lewison, the labor relations man. As for me, I was very nervous as I looked the union delegation over. There was Irving Zeichen of the shipping department, John Lombardo, who worked in the lead mixing room, and the others. We never had a union in our plant before. We frankly didn't want one now. I'd like to open this meeting by pointing out that the workers can't prosper unless the company prospers. That means we have to work together. Cooperate. Now, whatever your demands are, just remember one thing. You can't pay out more than you take in. Now, what are you asking? This is what we want, a 25% increase in wages. You're kidding. Where's it gonna come from? It's impossible. We want a union shop. And do check off. Collect your own bills. Seniority rights. We've got to do our own hiring and firing. Oh, Johnny, it looks like we'll have to call... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You people have thrown everything at us, including the kitchen sink. We have to have time to think this over. Okay. When you fellas are ready to talk business, call us back. Anything new today? Nah. The whole week gone and they're still talking. Yet. 
Okay, fine. Okay, Mac. I'm on my way. Well, what's your offer? Five percent increase in wages. We'll take 15. Five percent is all we can give. But not only that, vacations are out. We demand vacations with pay. We insist on a hiring and firing. Nothing going. Going. No, we we can't can't all, right. all right, all right. Understand that? Okay. We'll try to work out some compromise. Well, gentlemen, we'll call a caucus and let you know about it. Okay. It was a long, hard fight. In the end, both sides compromised. The union got a 9% raise, union shop, check off, vacations with pay, grievance machinery, and seniority. Management got a hiring and firing clause and arbitration machinery. They hoped they would also get a more satisfied, loyal, and productive labor force. Neither side was completely happy. The union thought things should have been improved much more. Management felt they had been pushed around. They were worried about how the grievance machinery would work. And they soon found out. On September 27th, small fire. There was almost no damage. Two hours later, it was all over. But on Saturday, it showed up in their pay envelopes. They were all docked for the loss of time. They didn't like it because they felt it wasn't their fault. What are you going to do about this? Don't worry. They're not going to get away with this. They had a long and bitter argument. Management felt some people were legitimately entitled to be paid. Others had taken advantage of the situation and gone home. Finally, they arrived at a compromise method of payment. And the pattern was the same throughout the years. The union and management battled and argued over every grievance, and at least one third of the grievances went to arbitration. Then, in 1940, they began to negotiate a new contract. Let's face it, fellas. The last two years have been pretty tough for all of us. And here you are again asking for more money. You know as well as I do, we're in no position to pay any wage or rate increase. Who are you kidding, Mr. Lewison? I don't care whether you believe it or not, Lombardo. It's true. Yeah? Where's the proof? We must have sold millions of pencils last year. Why don't you show us some proof? OK, Lombardo, we'll give you your proof. You bring your union order to here, and we'll let them examine the company's books. All right, Mr. Lewison. We'd love to look at your books. You see, fellas, I've checked the books. And what they told you is the truth. There's no doubt about it. You were right about the books. But just the same, we've got to get a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. And we ain't getting it now. We're not getting a fair day's work either. How do you expect us to pay a penny more until we cut our production costs? Trouble is, you're not making any money because of the way your plant's being managed. Is that so? Yeah. Well, the trouble with you workers, you're not producing enough for us to give you better wages. Is that your last word? No increase? That's my last word. Okay, fellas, let's go. Let's have order. You've all heard the report. Your committee recommends strike. Let's call the question. 
Okay. All those in favor, raise your hands. All right. Put them down. Those opposed? It's unanimously carried. The strike lasted about eight weeks and completely stopped production. The union committee and management conferred long hours trying to get together. We've been sitting here the past few days getting nowhere. Now, we have one last compromise offer to make. And when I say last, I mean last. All right, let's hear it. Well, for instance, Wait a minute, John, let me tell them. Let's face facts. To begin with, you people say you can't give us any more money because you can't cut production costs. That's correct. All right, here's our proposition. We think we know how production costs can be cut. After all, we work in the plant, and we're closer to some of these things than you are. Just what do you mean? I mean we'll help cut costs and improve production, providing you give us workers a share of the savings. Now, how about it? We'll talk it over. Excuse me. Look, we have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Sure, if they can really reduce our costs, but that's a mighty big if. Will you go along with us? I'm in agreement. Okay. We'll give it a try. Everyone knows on what basis the strike was settled. We all get a share of any of the savings we make. Now let's all get busy, okay? okay. Meeting adjourned. Wagner and Lombardo were to work out suggestions that would increase production and get the workers a share of the benefits. They knew it wouldn't be easy. Hello, Mr. Lewison. Hello, Lombardo. Oh, uh, Mr. Lewison. Yeah. Are you going to back us up in this thing? Look, you were given this job. I have my doubts of how it's going to work out. What's the matter? Don't you believe in it? Sure I do. When I see the results. Third floor, Fred. Production, costs, and payroll records. Hey, you expect us to dig through that stuff? Well, don't let these scare you, Lombardo. It's as easy as pushing your head through a stone wall. Huh. Don't strain yourselves.
went into the factory to get suggestions for improving production. Some workers and some foremen too resented it. But it soon began to pay off. Zeichner found a girl in the packing department passing defective pencils. She said she did it to raise her output. But he pointed out that people wouldn't pay good money for bad pencils. And if they stopped buying, they'd all be out of jobs. She stopped doing it. Our thing. Well, I could save hours with a knee switch. That's a good idea. If the pencils would come direct from the machine, it would be faster. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Morning, John. Morning, Irv. Good morning. Well, here they are, a hundred recommendations for getting out more production. Swell. I bet you won't like them. Why? We think the union's done a swell job. How do you know? You haven't even looked at the report. You think we're blind? You think we don't know what you fellas have been doing these last few months in our shop? You've really done a fine job. And it was true. They had done a fine job. At the end of the year, we accepted 75% of the union's suggestions. We definitely were on the way to getting a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. They've been working over nine years now on a fair day, fair pay basis. Their production's up, their wages are too. It works. Lombardo is still the union shop steward, still president of the gripe department. Every time that phone rings, he knows somebody wants to report a grievance. Here's how the grievance machinery works today. Lombardo gets the details from the committee woman and talks it over with the worker. In this case, Helen Johnson was operating a machine on piecework. There weren't enough of these pencils sold to keep one worker busy, so she couldn't earn enough. The next step is to talk to the department foreman. In this particular instance, the foreman was unable to do anything. Therefore, according to the contract, this grievance was taken directly to Mr. Lewis. Busy, Dick? Oh, busier than usual. What's the bad news today, John? Well, not much. You know this girl, Helen Johnson, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, all about uh, her case. Sit down. Thanks. Let's have a talk. Well, what are you going to do about her, Dick? She's taking a beating and a paycheck. And it ain't her fault. What do you suggest? Well, raise the wages 20 cents an hour. Uh -uh. We couldn't afford to do that with a sideline pencil. You know that, John. Well, what are you prepared to do about it? Let me think. I got an idea. How about if we added one of this type pencil to our school box? We can undoubtedly sell more boxes. And that would raise production enough to put Helen on full time. Swell. OK. Anything else? No, I guess that's all for today. OK, say, John. Yeah? I'm going over to the other plant. How about taking a walk with me? OK, Dick. I'd like to talk to you about something else. It's about the union in general. Anything the matter? No, nothing. I just wanted to tell you that I never thought it would work, but it does. Good. Now, don't get me wrong, John. There are plenty of things we don't like about the union. For example, that grievance machinery takes a lot of time. It gives us headaches. But we are settling our differences, and production has increased. Sure, and we make suggestions that are good for both of us. That's right. Yes, both sides gain. Management now has no strikes to stop production. The workers have more enthusiasm for their jobs. Hourly production is up 15%. The company gets more productivity. It gets a fair day's work. The workers have more security. They feel they belong, that they are part of a team. They have a fair chance to advance. They get honest consideration of their problems and grievances. 
they found it pays to do better work, to suggest improvements. They get more money for more production. They get a fair day's pay. That's the way it goes, Dick. We give a little, we take a little, we compromise and we cooperate. Exactly. There's no doubt about it. We're both profiting by working together. Right, John? Right. 